l'autre bout du monde. Non, 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 Sis, tu peux faire. Tu sais ce que tu peux faire? Si c'est un problème, peut-être que tu peux juste recorder cette partie et tu peux le faire. C'est sur le tape. Tu as le tape? Oui, mais ce n'est pas le même. Tu as un tape? Nous avons fixé ça à Toronto avec le harmonizer. Can you sing it in here for us one time, Renny? Can you make the switch? Can you sing it just sing with me here? Okay. It's time to take a message everywhere. You know, c'est l'amour qui nous rassemble ici à l'autre bout du monde. What's happening over there, I suppose, uh, if we can do something about it, if we can give a break, help, whatever it is, even if it's to save uh, 1,000 children, it would be fantastic. Even, even if it's to save one life, it's fantastic. Fly Jim Balance, we just arranged today. Air Canada came through again to pick up the... I didn't know that. Uh, ...pick up the airfare for Jim to go over to Hamburg to record Bruce Coburn, because it's imperative that Bruce Coburn be on it. He's either. probably one of the most concerned Canadian musicians when it comes to the human race, so he's going to be on it. And one. This show them Canada still cares. And uh, we got... Let's show them Canada still cares, right? It's hard to understand how these things happen, but they happen, and you have to do what you can to help somebody else. We're extremely fortunate civilization, people that live in North America. We don't know how good we have it, especially people in the music business. We struggle, but these aren't real struggles. These are you know, these struggles are only relative to what everybody else is doing. The struggle that people are having in Ethiopia is the most real struggle there is. It's the struggle to exist, the struggle to stay alive. As a human being, it's your right, it's your obligation to to give something, whatever it is. And this is what we do, so this is what we give. I think more passion is called for. Yeah. A little more passion, huh? Got it. You got it. There was no low points, but the one thing that kept going through my mind, and, and as the day went on, I felt increasingly bad for people that had to sit around for so long and wait. It, we got off to such a great start, and then, as predicted, things slowed down a little while we zeroed in on those solo lines. If we take a stand, every woman, child, and man, not grooving yet. Uh, let me come up for a sec. You can't believe how fast things can get out of control. Um, I lost it once during the day with Carol Pope and uh, Paul Hyde. I don't mean I lost, we didn't lose our timbers. They had given me a performance, a vocal performance, which was really good in the first two takes. For some reason, I didn't pick up on it. And I just went right past it for, I lost myself for about 10 minutes. Now you're doing it the way, uh, I wanted you to, but it's, it doesn't feel right. So, <laughs> if we take a stand, a stand. Once you start saying one more, if you've just a little more, you know, you lose it so fast, and you, I may have never gotten it back, and the whole thing would have been a disaster. That sounded good. You probably did that the first time you walked up to the mic, and I just didn't notice, but. That our job no longer is to simply make music, but to use the potential uh, 
effect that we have on people to maybe raise their consciousness to some degree about what's going on in the world. That's what moved me. We can make it work! <laughs> we can make it work! For God's sakes! <laughs> <laughs> Which one do you want me to do? If I already got one you like, so I gotta do two. Yep. No probs. Okay. <laughs> but the We Can Make It Work is fabulous. Okay. I was gonna hype the artist. <laughs> the old hype the artist drink. <clears throat> going to be great and, then, and that's like singing with the chorus let's try it again get even angrier with it we can breathe the distance okay yeah here we go now i'm really mad what all right we can Perfect, but one more. Oh, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> I'll right. tell you what we could try on the end, on this, on this one, you could sing along with the chorus and be like off, you know, like off with the chorus a little. Dave, you know? I don't know, I don't know. Let me just That's go the, Yeah, go. fine. Okay, yeah, we'll pick it up from there. Yeah, okay. Tears are not enough! Yeah! Here we go. That's what I want, that, right there. Got to boom. Let's put that in the hole, okay? Because when you went high, it was great, but it, it uh, sounded too much like Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And the last person to do Yeah, but then I gotta go out and sing one next, right? Sure. You're the last guy. You've got to, got to. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> The true test came when uh, we went to do the hockey players 
And the reason why I wanted to have the hockey players on, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but to me, this is Canada. This is not just singers getting together. I wanted to expand it and show just the whole country banding together for this worthwhile cause, you know. And so we went and got the hockey players, and they were very cooperative. And I was going, oh, no, if these guys can't sing this thing, I'm dead. Mulligan's going to, everybody's going to kill me, right? We've been bragging about the fact that it's a real easy melody to sing. Well, man, we have video of Mike Bossy with his veins popping. He's <laughs> like singing Bruce. so hard. Yeah. <laughs> and he later confided that he says, you know, I really want to be a singer. <laughs> it was fantastic, man. These guys were singing their balls off. Can right. you say that? No, you can't. No, you can't. These guys were singing their hearts out. Okay. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> As every day goes by, how can we close our eyes until we open up our hearts? We can learn to share and show how much we care. share some memories of that day because he co-wrote the song he associate produced it played the drums on it legendary producer jim balance here with me and what a great treat to meet you thanks for coming in nice to be here thank you 30 i, I find it hard to choke out 30 years today i know well, wow when your um, producer phoned me last night and, and said uh, what do you think about the 30th anniversary i said i didn't realize until you phoned <laughs> but here it is yeah so the story goes that we are the world that just happened in the States. Quincy Jones picks up the phone, calls his pal David Foster, says, why don't you do a Canadian song for us for African famine relief? And David called you. Well, I actually ran into David in the lobby of the recording studio. So I was in Little Mountain Sound in Vancouver, right. I think playing drums on a McDonald's commercial or something in Studio <laughs> A. David was in Studio B with the Paolas. And he came running out into the lobby in a panic going, Jim, you have a home studio. And I went, yeah. He said, we need to write a song, like, right now. That? Yeah. So, uh, you, did, so you did. So you, you had it ready to go, you, and he comes over to write the song. Tell me about the writing process. Well, we, we met the next day. Um, David had a melody, which is helpful, <laughs> and he had a title, which Bob Rock and Paul Hyde had provided, Tears Are Not Enough. Okay. And so that's all we had. So we started work on, on the lyric, but then David had to go back and uh, continue with the paolas. So David left, and then my friend Brian Adams came over, and Brian and I continued on the lyric, and then uh, we decided, you know, this is a Canadian song. We, we should have some French in here. My wife is francophone. Right. So she came down to the studio and wrote uh, a verse in French. Exactly. David came back at the end of the day, was very pleased with, with the lyrics. Uh, we, we did a little bit of, you know, nudging, and then um, recorded most of the track in my home studio, and then the rest of it was done at Little Mountain, French horn, and so on. And then a few days later, we flew to Toronto and added all the voices. But in between, these people had to be convinced to... To take part? To take part. I mean, this was just over a matter of days, wasn't Literally it? Literally days. And they didn't... So you... What did you do in that time, 30 well, years uh, ago? Brian's manager, Bruce Allen, deserves all the credit. He got on the phone, um, spoke to Elliot Roberts, who manages Joni Mitchell and Neil Young. They agreed to come. Um, 
uh, Getty Lee from Rush, Gordon Lightfoot, uh, and the list, the more people that <laughs> said they'd do it, the more that wanted to do it. So, so thankfully you had a good studio when you were able to record. Manta was big enough for everybody. Yes, it was, yeah. And it was February the 10th, 1985. They came in. Um, I remember seeing, I mean, the documentary, there was that sign over the door. I don't, was it David Foster who put it there? Yeah. Leave, check your egos at the door or leave your ego leave your at the door or something door, yeah. like that. And, um, did it work? Of course. I mean, but everyone arrives. Uh, Gordon Lightfoot drove himself to the studio in an old pickup truck. Seriously. And uh, Neil and Joni arrived in a taxi. So, you know. <laughs> a it, big yellow taxi. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it, it was, everyone came with the right attitude to start. And away you went, and you were recording. Now, did they know which lines that they would be singing? Not until they arrived. Okay. And neither did we. We, um, David and I flew out, well, David, myself, Brian Adams, and Mike Reno from Lover Boy on the airplane on the flight from Vancouver to Toronto, we sat with the lyric and went, you know, you know, Gordon Lightfoot, he's iconic. He'll start. He'll, he'll, he'll sing start. the first line. And then we I think it went Burton Cummings and, did? and then down the line and Joni Mitchell. So I don't know when you when I used to hear it on the radio and I was a disc jockey at the time, so I used to play it on the radio a lot of times. I used to do you listen to it the same way? I mean, I, I used to hear, we're going to play a little bit of, hold on for just a second, Linda, but I used to like sing along, imitate the, the, the singers, try to name that singer as they, as they play back. It, it was kind of fun. Do you, did you ever do that when you heard the final product? No, no. not really. I mean, okay, because this is the one I, uh, this is the one, my favorite line. Ready, Linda? When it comes out, when I'd be in my car. Oh, there's your wife's French line. Okay, yeah. Oh, we're going to talk about Bruce Colbert in a second. And then this was when I'd be screaming in my car. <laughs> I love the Getty moment. And, and when I hear it on the radio, I, I picture the session. You know, Do because, you really? Because I was there, so I just have memories about the, the well, session. Well, let's talk about those, those memories, because I think 30 years statute of limitations, you can tell me <laughs> the, the true backstories. If I remember. If you remember. Okay, so what was your favorite of all of these great stars, favorite individual recording of all? Well, I mean, I'm just a fan. So for me, it was the first time I'd met Joni Mitchell. I was in awe. Right. And I was as far away from her as I am from you. Well, she sang a line that I had written. So it was, you know, really quite, quite emotional. And, and uh, I, I just couldn't believe I was nice? hearing Joni Mitchell sing. You know, when you see Bruce Coburn, I said we had to talk about him. You can see the background's different because he wasn't at the studio that day, was he? Did you, you, had, you went and recorded him elsewhere? There it is yeah, there. Bruce was on tour in Germany. Um, uh, his manager, Bernie Finkelstein, said, you know, it'd be great to have Bruce involved somehow, but he's in Germany. So I foolishly volunteered to fly to Germany and, uh, and record Bruce's line. Because in those days, the technology didn't exist. You couldn't just record it and send it by email and, and fly it into the session. So someone had to literally go there, um, go into a studio with a camera crew just to record that one line of lyric. Unbelievable. I want to show some pictures. The video actually begins before the song starts with some incredibly strong images that you may well have seen on CBC News Network or CBC television because our journalist, Brian Stewart, uh, former colleague, former senior correspondent, Brian was the one who alerted the world to the Ethiopian famine, first in 1984, uh, widely recognized for that. And these video images from Brian's reporting begin the video. So it ended up that you won, that you earned $3 million for famine relief and were able to, to help the cause in that way. Tell yeah. me about, you know, contributing as you did? Well, I mean, it happened very quickly. The, um, the record came out and the response at, at radio and television, it, was, it went to number one on the record charts, as you probably remember. From, I do. From your days in radio. Um, it was number one on much music. And Canadians went out and bought the record in droves. And it, it might be worth mentioning that that wouldn't be possible today. It might, uh, a similar uh, record might get a million downloads or three million downloads on YouTube. Uh, but, you know, zero dollars in, uh, in, in donations. So um, very, very quickly, $3 million rolled in. We were able to get the money uh, to the agency and, and over to Africa. So must um, be proud of that. Yeah. Part of that moment in music history. True. And, and uh, that human contribution as well. What a treat to meet you. Anyway, thanks a lot, Jim, for coming thanks, in. Heather. Thanks for the memories. 30 years <laughs> since that great moment. Again.